best approach for this particular patient uh, in retrospect. Um, aneurysm. Go ahead, show the video, please. I think that the, the uh, intriguing presentation that uh, Jonathan Russen gave with the, did he call it the ciliary approach? Um, I think that, that, that's certainly worth exploring. Our uh, plastic surgeon is not particularly uh, pleased with uh, the eyebrow incisions because he's had to take care of some of them. I asked him to send us pictures, but he never has. Uh, I don't know whether they were from us or from other um, plastic <coughs> procedures. Uh, so this here is obviously uh, the clinoid, and uh, just to show that you really have just as much uh, room as you do with the other openings, which really should always be limited to three centimeters anyway. Um, but this is a calcified aneurysm. You can see the distortion of the optic nerve here, uh, which is uh, why this is the magic stuff of uh, stopping some of the bleeding in the, from the cavernous sinus, cutting part of the ring, really didn't anticipate needing that, um, but it was required. This is just giving us greater access uh, to the aneurysm. And now here's the optic nerve, here's the aneurysm, that's the calcification. So we want to be sure, as we're closing it, uh, to make sure that this doesn't fracture. Internal carotid artery, optic nerve behind it, keeping an eye on that. And you notice how nicely that decompresses uh, previously distorted optic nerve in the 3D. Next one. Uh, <coughs> this is a uh, patient um, who has a terrible family history and has these two aneurysms. Uh, this is uh, again a very uh, small opening and uh, problem with intraoperative rupture. Go ahead. constrained here. Internal carotid artery, optic nerve. You can see the takeoff of uh, the pecan, uh, the medial, you can see some of the strands. You see the, the aneurysm appearing. You see the very thin-walled aneurysm uh, uh, from the PECOM, and you also see the anterior choroidal artery aneurysm. Uh, you see its attachment to the uh, tentorium. Uh, you see the PECOM medially. So now separating the PECOM so that we can, uh, we can put a clip on the aneurysm and not incorporate it cutting the tentorium so that we can free up the aneurysm so when we apply the clip, uh, it doesn't tear the uh, dome away or uh, more importantly, doesn't tear the neck. And third nerve, the red blood. I know that the residents and fellows in my cases are not used to this, but <laughs> you've been with Nakaji enough to know that that's blood. <laughs> Temporary clip. Still in the Kachi case. <laughs> I used to pick up Joe, but he started crying, so. <laughs> um, the point is that as long as the blood comes out at you, it is not a problem for the patient. 
It's if you would tampen off this to stop the bleeding so you can't see it, you're forcing the blood everywhere else. And so a temporary clip uh, on these uh, vessels, and then a clip that uh, sort of stops the bleeding so we can examine everything, and then we put a clip down, taking off the uh, temporaries. Now we have a clip. There's a little bit of the neck here because we wanted to preserve the back of the, of the artery for the pecan and we've done that, and now it's uh, occluded, and now we can include, go ahead and include the uh, anterior choroidal artery. Key there is naturally, you've gotta be absolutely certain that the anterior choroidal artery is preserved, and uh, we check that out, right here's the anterior choroidal artery, and if you look at it, you can see that it's healing very, very nicely. And that's really the key of, I, I, I've gotta say that Robbie made a huge contribution to us by introducing uh, ICG. Uh, we can go on to the uh, next case, uh, last slides. Uh, so 